The streets will never make you grow. It's not a seed, it's a gutter. There's no happy endings in this life. So this is my message to you. The streets will never love you back. Hey guys. Well, I figured I'd come on today, just checking out the chat. 39 people in the chat. I figured I'd come on today and talk about going to prison and how people, you either die in prison, you grow old. When I was away, I met so many old timers doing time. And I said to myself, I was a young kid, 23 years old. My first time I went away, I was actually 19. I did three months on Rikers Island. And then the age of 23, I went away and I got a longer bit. And then of course, you know what? In the course of time, you come home and then you get more time. And that's exactly what happens when you're involved in the street one way or another, whether you're involved in a mafia family, whether you're underneath their umbrella, whether you're in a gang, the streets will never love you back. Eventually, you have to go to prison. Prison is like college when you're a criminal. It's either you're going to learn something from it or you're not going to learn anything from it. And you're going to keep on going back. That's just how prison is. So I figured, you know what? There's so many guys I know that went away, threw their lives away, and are still there and actually died in jail. And a lot of guys come home. And it's like a rotating door. You know, you go, up, you go out one door and then you're coming out and then you're going back in to another door. That's just the way it is. And also what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to name a couple new moderators. That's what I did. I wrote down a couple new moderators. I went over it with Boston J. Boston J is one of my moderators. And let me tell you about Boston J. You know, the Irish people, they're very loyal people. They are. And uh, I appreciate Boston J. I appreciate Live and Let Live. <clears throat> now, as you guys know, I also have FBS and I have Gunsmoke as moderators. You know, they're my friends. Uh, you know, they proved themselves to me. And I think that having a moderator is just more than just taking out the trash. You know, I think it's more, you have to know that person. You have to trust that person. That person has to be some kind of friend to you. And you have to have some kind of history with them. So I'll be naming some new moderators today. I have a whole bunch of them I'm going to be naming. You know, look, I have over 26,000 followers on my channel. And uh, I know it's going to grow and grow. And to all my followers, I love you people. And uh, I have some new merchandise coming. And everyone who is a member of my Patreon channel, uh, eventually you will get a hat, a T-shirt, a mug, something like that. Uh, we'll figure it out. And, uh, you know, I paid for this merchandise. And you guys actually paid for my Patreon. So, you know, every single one of you who... Uh, became a member of my Patreon that support me. And I know all you people support me out there. And I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, thank you for giving me the support and the love. But my Patreon people, uh, you know, they definitely have a T-shirt coming. They pay monthly and uh, or a mug or a hat, something. I have to, some new merchandise coming out. Austin J, I see you. And uh, so, yeah, I'll be having some new moderators now. Because I only have four moderators. And you know what? You see what's going on on YouTube. There's a lot of haters out there. A lot of evil people. People who make up stories. People who tell lies. And, uh, you know, they're pointing the finger at everyone else. Meanwhile, they're the devils and they're the bad people. Just the way it is. As you can see, I got a little sunburn today. I was out there taking the sun. I went to the beach with uh, my daughter. 
and I had a little fun time when the water, the water was nice today. But, uh, you know, listen, life is all about making good people your friends, spending it with family, uh, making good memories, and leaving something behind. What's up, Joe? How's everything? Joe Murray. And actually, Joe Murray is a, a defense attorney. If you need a defense attorney in within the five boroughs, call Joe Murray. Joe Murray is a great attorney. He's actually my attorney. And uh, I'm proud to call him a friend. So let me give a couple shout-outs to you people. Ramp is Inc. Yes, it's hot out there today. Not that hot. It's like in the 80s. I thought it was actually going to be 90-something degrees today, but it's in the 80s. Uh, let's see. We have John Epi. Let me see what John Epi's saying. Let me pull up a couple of these. John Epi, Jimmy, Wild Bill's son has been on other shows on YouTube. Do you know him from the street? Wild Bill's son, I did not know Wild Bill's son from the street, but I got to know him. Uh, I actually met Wild Bill's son, Billy Jr., through Michael DeRosa. And he could tell you that I'm a straight shooter. I tell the truth. I met him. Uh, I was actually out in Arizona a long time ago, many years ago. I'm home almost, I think, 15 years. October will be 15 years I'm home. So I would say I met Billy Jr. You know, Billy Jr. is from a different area than me, you know. Billy Jr. didn't really come around uh, Bath Avenue. He was near 11th Avenue, 13th Avenue. That's like where the Colombo people are strong over there. Bath Avenue was more Bonanno, Gambino, Lucchese guys, a couple of Genovese guys here and there, but no Colombo guys in my area. The Colombo guys are basically 13th Avenue, 11th Avenue, downtown Brooklyn, you know, stuff like that. But uh, I did know his father. I uh, spent some time with his father when I went away. He was nothing but a class act, Vio Bill. And these guys, you know, that are in big families, different families that are big shots, a guy like Wild Bill, you know, when you see him, it's basically, hey, hi, Bill, you know, stuff like that. Because, you know, I'm a kid on the street. This guy's an underboss. And, uh, you know, unless you're around his people, then it's a different story. But Billy Jr., I met him. I was introduced to him through Michael DeRosa. So uh, this way you know. But actually, I just spoke to Billy Jr. yesterday. He called me, and uh, we had a nice conversation. And hopefully he'll come on the show soon. I mean, look, I saw him go on uh, Lee Cole's show with Danny Trio, which, uh, you know what, it was a nice interview. But uh, Billy Jr., he knows he's welcome on here any time. And I don't care if people go on other people's shows. You know what? That's fine. Uh, you know, it's whoever you are, you know, you're comfortable with, I guess. You know? I mean, you know what? I'll be probably uh, doing an interview here and there uh, in the near future. You know, I know who I'm focused on. I know who I want to be interviewed by. And uh, you know what? Hopefully it happens. But we will see. Uh, Joe Murray. Roderick Molina, funny. I was in court in Brooklyn all morning. Wapio was Mr. Patrick Hazen. Okay, Joe Murray's talking to somebody. So let me give a couple of shout outs. Boston J, Living Let Live, The Squeeze, I'm Conti, no relationship to George. Thank God. <laughs> That's funny. I'm a Conti, no relationship with George. Thanks, God. Darren Wainwright, what's up, Darren? How's everything? Ryan Brown, what's up, Ryan? Ryan, and you know what? We're going to uh, – Boston Jays coming down, I think, uh, at the end of the month or maybe next month, whenever it is. And Boston Jays been talking to me about you, Ryan. So uh, we're going to make some plan to probably come see you, me and Boston Jay. And, uh, you know, Boston Jay talks very highly of you. And, uh, you know, thank you so much for supporting me and coming to the channel. It means a lot. And, uh, you know, we spoke once before about, uh, you know, your mom and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, my heart goes out to you. If you need me, I'm here. Who else? Uh, let's see. 
Davin Grant. Hey, Jimmy, much respect, my friend. You're a man's man. Take care of yourself and your family because that's what real men do. Absolutely. Thank you, Darren. Same to you. And, uh, you know, thank you for joining us today. I appreciate it. 92 people in the chat. That other thing is, listen, guys, you know what? I don't get a lot of people in my chat unless maybe I have a good guest on. I don't go live a lot. You know, some guys go live all the time. I don't. Some guys go live uh, twice a day, three times a day. I don't. Every so often I go live. Usually I do it on a Sunday. But uh, today I figure let me just pop up uh, and see what's going on out there. I want to uh, make some new moderators on my channel. You know, like I said, I got over 26 strong. And, uh, you know, I want it to grow. And I want to build a brand. That's what this is all about. It's all about building a brand, growing, reaching out to you people. And also in the course, you people, we help each other. You know, you have something you want to say on this channel. Anybody's welcome to come on the channel. You want to promote something, uh, you know, something. You have a business or something, just reach out. Let me know. And that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help all you guys. And I appreciate everything you do. Paul Mignot. Jimmy, when you were a kid, did they give the strap in school or juvenile detention? You are about my age, and we had it big time out here. Well, you know what? The Catholic schools, they hit you with the rulers back in the day. Uh, in public school, I went to public school. I didn't go to Catholic school. Little Georgia Adamo went to Catholic school for a little while until he threw a chair out the window. And... Uh, then he went to public school. But yes, the teachers back in the day growing up, what they did was they hit you. Absolutely. There were a lot of times that the teachers hit us, but as we got older, we got back at the teachers and we used to wait for the teachers after school if they hit us. Me and my friends, we would wait for them and we would jump them after school. We would follow them to their car and we would jump them. That was a couple of things we did back in the day when we were kids. But back in the day, the teachers used to uh, hit you over the head. They would smack you. There was a lot of times my mother have to, had to go after school. And my mother has a lot of brothers. And, uh, you know, she would say, uh, you know what, don't let me tell my brothers. And, uh, you know, but that's how it was back then. You know, growing up, it was more rough and tumble. And uh, the teachers really, uh, you know, they. I think I learned more. Growing up, because, you know, I see my kids today in the schools, and I used to love science class. Mr. Katz was my uh, teacher. Don't know if he's still around. Maybe he watches the show. That was 163 back in the day. And we used to have a lot of fun, you know. But I learned a lot in school. You know, I quit school in ninth grade, and then from there I went for my GED with Tommy Reynolds. I never got my GED outside in the street. I got my GED when I went to Lewisburg Penitentiary. Manny Madonna sat me down and he said, you know what, while you're ahead, you're going to use this place to your advantage. And that's exactly what I did, you know. But, uh, yeah, back in the day, the teachers used to beat you up. They're not allowed to do that today. But back in the day, that's what they did. Yes, absolutely, Paul. Uh, let's see what else we got over here. The squeeze. Oh, yeah, got the strap on a regular basis, grade three. I thought it was weird when I didn't get the strap. Okay, so who do we got in the chat today? Guadino Inc. Pull on your sideburns or pinch and twist your back. Ouch. Well, that's what they did back in the day, right? Yes. Bit of beep. Hey, Jimmy, God bless. Thank you for showing up. God bless you. BT, happy fourth to you and your family. Thank you, same to you. Roderick Molina, Joe Murray, thank you, sir. Strength and honor. RM, what was Billy Porter like in Lewisburg? A gent and fairly quiet guy on the street down here, Pittsburgh Ralph. Well, I wasn't what Billy Porter and in uh, Lewisburg, I was actually with Billy Porter in McKean, and uh, Billy Porter was 
He was a nice guy to me. He was a gentleman, him and his brother Chucky. Uh, I'm sure they were tough when they had to be tough, but they were gentlemen. Billy was a quiet guy, uh, never sat down and relaxed quite, did a lot of walking. Uh, you know, back in the day when we did time, we used to love to eat and cook. But Billy Porter, you know, the memory I have of him, he was really uh, a good guy. You know, I mean, even Chucky Porter, Chucky Porter was a good guy, you know. And that was the thing, too, you know, because Chucky Porter, I'm not sure if he had Irish in him. I'm not sure if he was Italian. But, uh, you know, he was the boss of Pittsburgh, Chucky Porter. And he was a good guy. He had a, a, a birthmark on his face. But, you know, back in the in the street, what I heard, they were, they were tough guys, you know. I'm not from Pittsburgh. But, uh, yeah, I spent time with them. And uh, I think Joey something was also with them. I got a super chat over here, $49.99. James Taylor. James Taylor, it's very generous. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for showing up. It means a lot to me. Let's see who else got over, something over here. Now, I, I came on because I wanted to talk about guys in prison, how they grow old. You know, I went away at the age of 23. I spent time with a lot of guys. And I'll tell you, you know what? When I was spending time with these guys, I said to myself, so, wow. These guys are old. They're growing old. And you know what? A lot of them are going to die in here. I mean, look at Herbie Sperlin. Herbie Sperlin was one that, uh, you know, ended up dying in jail. I mean, there's a whole bunch of people. I spent time with a guy by the name of Joe Gallo. Joe Gallo was like an underboss in the Cleveland mob, Ohio. Uh, he was on the third tier in J Block. And I used to go up to his tear. And this is a guy who never left the cell. So, you know, I'll reminisce and give you some memories of back in the day when I was spending time. And Joe Gallo had everyone, whether it was food, people who worked in the kitchen, they would deliver it to his cell. He lived in a cell by himself. Now, when you're in these maxes for so long, eventually uh, you get your own cell. And that is, you know, every reason to behave. If you behave, you know, you get your own cell. And if you fuck up, then you don't get your own cell. But Joey Gallo from Ohio, he always uh, had everything delivered to him, whether it was food. The laundry guy would come, pick up his clothes, everything. And you have some guys like that in prison that get everything delivered to them, guys who have money. And a lot of wise guys, when they go to jail, have money. So I would say a guy like Ali Boy Persigo probably has something like that. But I'm sure Ali Boy Persigo walks the yard. If you saw Joe Gallo in the yard in Lewisburg back in the day, that was very rare. It was like, wow, Joe, Mick, what are you doing out of yourself? You know, that's how it was back then. But, you know, I'm going to reminisce about a lot of guys I spent time with and a lot of guys that are in prison today that are going to die in jail. But my message out there is basically to anyone out there, whether you're a gang member, whether you're a, you know, a legitimate guy, an old timer, whatever you are, you know what? The thing is, you have to do the right thing in life. That's what it's all about. You know, I started out as a kid in the street and, you know, I thought I had the right direction. You know, me and my friends, I can name. A whole bunch of them that they're not here no more. John Polio, uh, George Adamo, John Perdone, Richie Keenan, uh, Michael Marola, Paulie Bellino, and I could go on and on and on. And you know what? Some of them were murdered and some of them overdosed on drugs. And what I'm saying is that every day is precious out there. And, you know, sometimes we take people for granted. Don't take people for granted. If you have someone you love and care about, you know what? Give them a hug and tell them you love them because life is very short and it's very precious too, you know? But let me, uh, Joe Murray, 999, Jimmy, police off the cuff had a party at a place in Manhattan that was a huge success. They invited all of their prior guests to come and so many subs showed up too. You should think about it. No, Joe, this is what I want to do. I want to do this. Actually, Joe, I want you to show up too. 
I want police off the cuff to come. I want Tommy Dates to come. And uh, I'm in the middle of talking about this. I don't know where it's going to be, but uh, absolutely, this is something I want to do. This way, uh, you know, the subs could come. Uh, some people out there could show up. And, uh, you know, it'll be a nice time. We could all meet each other, say hi, and things like that. I got another super chat over here. Ryan Brown, 999. Got to go back to work, Jimmy. God bless you, brother. It would be an honor and privilege to meet you someday. Nothing but love for you. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate the super chat. Didn't have to do that, but I appreciate it. Thank you, too. And we are going to meet, for sure, 100%. Okay, let's see. Now, Paulie, Jimmy, you still in Bensonhurst? No, I, I, I don't live in Bensonhurst. Uh, no. But I'm in New York, yes, absolutely. RM, thanks, Jimmy. That's what we thought. Chucky was the mean, violent one a long time ago. Chucky's father was German-Irish. His mother Italian. There you go. So his mother was the better part. The Italian part. Okay. But uh listen, hey, Chucky was uh, you know, a gentleman. Chucky always had a cigar in his mouth. Had the birthmark on his face. Uh always a pleasant guy to be around, smart guy, good conversation. But uh, you know, these guys, you're never gonna see guys like this again. People don't realize that. You're never gonna see guys like this again. You know, and you know what there's a look. When I went away, there's a lot of good guys you meet and you meet some creeps, you know, and you find out, you know, who the good guys are and you find out who the creeps are. Toby Allen, 100. Hi, Jimmy. If you could change only one thing in your past, what would it be? All the best, my friend. If I could change one thing in my past, what would it be? Well, I would say I probably would go to school. That's one thing I would change. I probably would have went to school, uh, go to college, and become something. Maybe do eight years of college because four years of college today is like the 12th grade. You know, so you got to do at least eight years. And, you know, I'm pushing my kids to do that. I keep on uh, putting this in their head. You know, I want them to be independent. I don't want them to ever depend on anybody. You know, listen, life, life is rough out there. You know, and if you don't go to college, you got to take a trade. You got to do something well, to support yourself. This way you don't have to depend on nobody. And don't depend on the government. Look, and the people who need the government, look, you know what? That's a different story. If you need the government, what we do is you use them and then, you know, you find something that you want to do in your life. As, you know, you're getting money from them, do something, you know, to benefit your life. That's the way it should be, not to live off the government the rest of your life. But that's what I would do. I would go to school for sure. And in all honesty, maybe uh, I'd probably go into law enforcement because that's what I should have did. I should have went into law enforcement. See, a lot of you people don't know about my family history. You know, I have some family on my father's side that was in law enforcement. And basically, that whole side of my father's side was in law enforcement. Just at the time, when I was growing up, I was very close to my mother's side. And, uh, you know, I fell into the street. My father tried to put me in the right direction. He actually got me a union job. And, uh, you know, that's when I tell the story when me and Tommy Reynolds went to go see Willie and I had my union card and the cop told me that this union card ain't good. And me and Tommy Reynolds end up fighting with the COs. They end up giving us a beating and they escort us off of Rikers Island. But he, my father tried to put me in the right direction. Of course, my father wasn't in my house. So once I realized I was a greater force than my mother, who's going to stop me? But, uh, you know, that's the story of, uh, you know, what went on. So let me see who else is over here. Okay. Gary Monteleone. Hello, Jimmy. Great to see you, brother. Now, Gary, you know what? Since you're on here, and uh, you're going to actually be one of the first ones to know, 
that uh, I'm actually making Gary Montilion uh, a moderator. So Gary, you're gonna have a wrench. I know you don't come in all the time, but I'm just letting you know you're gonna have a wrench. So uh, at the end of the day over here, leave a comment on uh, this video and I'm gonna give you a wrench, okay, Gary? Because uh, you're a friend of mine, I know I can trust you, and I wanna give the people that are in my life and that always give me good advice that are in my corner. I want them to be in my circle. And, uh, you know, I trust you. So I want to give you a wrench. So you're going to be the first one I give a wrench to, Gary. Okay? So, Gary, you will be having a wrench. You might not have it now, but you will be having a wrench. Also, who else is out there? Let's see this one. Jimmy, did you stay at Tally's Bar? No, I didn't stay at Tally's Bar. Tally's Bar is on 18th Avenue. But I used to go to Tally's Bar on Tuesday nights with Georgia De Chico, Bobby De Chico. And when I went there, all the guys were there. Sammy and his crew was there. I would see Sammy there. Paulie Zach would be there. Frankie De Chico would be there. Everybody would be there. Now, before... I even went to Tally's Bar. They used to have card games in Staten Island. Uh, Frankie De Chico had these card games. Not sure who else was involved with them. But uh, at that time, Bobby De Chico used to be a dealer. And he would deal. And I would go there with Bobby and his father, Georgie De Chico. Georgie De Chico was a captain. And all the wise guys would be there. And I'm going back when Frankie Botts was alive. This was Joe Watts' partner. And then eventually, Frankie Botts ends up getting stabbed or shot in his house or something. But Frankie Botts, I remember him when he was when I was a kid. Okay, Frankie Botts was a tough guy, and he was partners with Joe Watts. When you saw these two guys, you knew something was going on. And listen, they were mad killers. But uh, going back, when you used to see them, they would also be friendly, and they would crack a joke here and there, you know. But that's how, you know, back in the day, the neighborhoods were a lot different. Then when I grew up, the neighborhoods started to get a little more crazy, uh, less respect, and things like that. Trent Nonparelli. Jimmy, was Paulie G a better fighter than Mike Hamster? Jimmy, that's the worst knockout you ever seen. Jimmy, what's the worst knockout you ever seen? Okay. Uh, was Paulie G a better fighter than Mikey Hamster? Well, you know what? I would say so. Absolutely. Paulie G was definitely a better fighter than Mikey Hamster. Paulie G was good with his hands. Uh, Mikey Hamster might think different, but absolutely. Now, the reason, look, you know, I could talk about this all day long. And this is a question where, you know, some people are going to say no, yes. But anyone who knew Paulie G, they knew how tough Paulie G was. And I love Paulie G. And I'm always going to talk good about him. I'm always going to keep his memory alive because he was a dear friend to me. And out of all my friends, okay, he showed me what a true friend was. And he really did. And that's the reason why he was the leader of our crew. Because no one else could have been the leader of our crew. Okay, he had brass balls. He was uh, a tough kid. And if he was your friend, he had your back 100%. And that's exactly what happened. John Paulie was murdered. And as soon as John Paulie was murdered, Paulie Galino got a memory piece of John Polio. And that's when we formed the Beth Avenue crew. But, yes, I would say Paulie Galino, 100%, absolutely. And Paulie G wasn't afraid to pull the trigger, you know, back in the day. Saying, unfortunately, you know why his own friends killed him. But remember something: when Paulie G opened up that door to Tommy Reynolds and Joey Calco, he thought he was opening up that door to a friend. He didn't know he was opening up that door to his executioners, because that's what they did. They executed him. Okay, they didn't just kill him; they executed him for his mother to 
just lay, you know, see him laying there in a pool of blood. Okay, same with me, Jimmy. My parents split, and I chose to stay with mom. Easier, softer way, no offense to mom, but I would have done a lot better. Well, you know what? Listen, you got to give respect to all the mothers out there because the mothers are always doing their thing. You know, every so often you have some mothers that, uh, you know, don't, you know, some of them that give up their kids. Uh, it does happen, you know, but, uh, you know, and I know a lot of good fathers out there. You know, my father was a good father just because my father didn't live with us underneath the same roof. Uh, my father always provided for us. If we needed something, he was there. We just make a phone call, this and that. The electric went off. You know what? Boom. He would give us the money. The electric bill went back on. I mean, back in the day, too, you had these uh these phones in the house, you know, with the big extension cord. You could walk with the extension cord all the way, like, to the, all the way to the end of the room. You know, I don't know if you guys remember that. You know, all these young kids today, Gunsmoke, what's up, baby? I see you. You know, Gunsmoke the Don, that's a, a dear friend of mine, too. Check him out. He comes out with some good videos. Uh, good guy. But uh, I don't know if you guys remember. Some of you guys ain't going to remember. But when we had the phones in the house, the extension cords were so long back then, you know. But uh, And then, you know, people used to call some numbers to talk to other people. I forgot the name, the 1-800 numbers. And our phone bills would be like six, 700. The phone would go off. And then we have to make money to pay that phone bill, you know. But it was crazy. Gabriel De Leon, Jimmy with Paulie G death anniversary coming up. Did you ever get a memory piece tattoo of him for him while you were doing time since you were locked up at the time? Thanks, Jim. I never got a memory piece of Paulie G. No, I didn't. Uh, the last tattoos that I got on my body was of my children. I got their names on me. Uh, I didn't get no other tattoos in the street. So uh, I haven't had a tattoo in a long time, you know. I was just actually thinking about getting a memory piece of my mom and dad. So, uh, you know, because my mom and dad, my father passed away pancreatic cancer. My mom passed away of a brain aneurysm at the age of 64 years old. So, uh, you know, I would say... You know, pretty soon, uh, who knows? You know, once you get one tattoo, then you just keep on going. You know, that's how that's how it goes with uh, getting ink on you. You know, it's like, you know, you got the fever. You just keep on going, get, getting them. But uh, Rampa Inc., a lot of wise guys got into the 900 numbers back in the day. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Joe Watts. Uh, I think he was the king of that. But you had a lot of wise guys back then. Even the phone cards back then were big. The phone cards, sometimes you get a phone card and it didn't even work. It was just a scam. It was all a bunch of bullshit, you know. But that's how it was. Let's see. Shane Robinson. Let's see what he has to say. I'm glad you changed your life. My father was a bookie and spent a lot of time in prison. We never made amends. And he has since passed away. You seem like a great father, Jimmy. Well, thank you. You know what? Look, I don't throw bouquets at myself, but anyone who knows me that's in my corner, look, whether it's school teachers, okay, uh, attorneys, my friends, my family, I'm telling you, listen, I have amazing friends in my life. And you know, all you guys know who you guys are, you know. And, uh, you know, Tommy Dates is one of them. I actually spoke to Tommy Dates today. And, uh, you know, he's like a big brother to me. He overlooks things. He always tells me, you know, what, you know, talk nice, stuff like that. Every so often, look, I, uh, you know, I act accordingly with people. I'm talking about on YouTube, you know, because you do have a lot of evil people on here. You know, they want to uh, smear your name, tell lies about you. They want people to dislike you. But uh, I have tons of good people in my corner, and I have a lot of family that, uh, you know, that I love and adore too. You know, I got a big family. But, uh, you know, thank you for that. I appreciate that, Shane Robinson. It means a lot. 
and uh, you know, to all the fathers out there that are, you know, are involved in their children's lives, you want know, to keep on doing the right thing, man. And it's not, you know, what you give your child. It's spending time with them. Spend time with your child. It's not what you give them. Because people just give, give, give. You know why? It's the time you give them, your time. you got to spend time with your kids, 100%. And, uh, you know, you don't give them what they want. You give them what they need. You know, that's what I've learned in my life. So let's see. My man Jimmy dropping by to wish you and your girls a happy 4th of July weekend. God bless Justin Calderon. Thank you. And, uh, you know, at the same to you and yours, I appreciate that. Yes, this is the 4th of July weekend. Well, look, I love the 4th of July. I love shooting fireworks off. You know, I'm going to get my kids some, some of those really big sparkles. You know, I'll end up getting some fireworks. I'm uh, probably going down to PA for maybe two days. You know, my friend Joe lives out there. He's like a uh, family to me. He's going to have a little fireworks show out there we'll have a barbecue we'll have a nice time my children has two chickens out there they have uh some animals some outside cats a dog some hens some roosters early in the morning the rooster goes, ooh, 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 ooh. i mean so it's really it, it's funny it's a totally different world from the five boroughs to going to pennsylvania you know to you know out there but, uh, you know, look, look, I like the peace. You know, I'm at a part in my life where I like peace. So I like to walk out and the grass is, you know, there. You got some land there. My friend Joey has a pool. So my kids go swimming. But, you know, what? it's a nice time. We do it uh, every so often, maybe twice a year. And, uh, you know, I look forward to it. Jimmy, that's the plan for the fourth. Yes, absolutely. And my kids love it, you know. They got these, We what happened was we bought four chickens when we were there, and they were little babies, and they end up growing, and they're huge now. Two of them, uh, I don't know, something got into a cage, and, you know, another animal got two of them, but there's two left. But uh, he just sent us a photo a couple of days ago. And we're going to go uh, up there and hang out with them for a couple of days. So it's going to be a fun time for sure. Let's see. Let's see who else is out there. David Parcell. Jimmy, did you ever spend time in Brooklyn Heights? I spent time there in 06 and 07. Loved it. Uh, Brooklyn Heights is, is beautiful out there. Sure. Every so often I'm uh, out there. Let's see what else we have. Nicholas Samato, chickens with Brooklyn accents. Bay 13, what's up, Jimmy? What's up? I don't know what Bay 13 this is. If this is, a, it might be a false Bay 13, don't know. Don't know what's going on. What do you think Tommy Reynolds will say when he gets released? What is he going to say? I'm sure he's going to say, you know what? Thank God I'm home. Let me enjoy the rest of my life out here. You know, I threw my life away. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, the guy spent so much of his life in jail. I mean, what do you think he's going to say? You know, enjoy the rest of your life out here. That's what he needs to do, for sure. You know, and if, and if he changed, like he said he changed, that's what he would do, right? Toby Jug, Scotland, Jimmy, Scotland. Laugh out loud. Well... Shout out to Scotland. I tell you, I have a lot of people out there in Scotland. And, uh, you know, I want to give a shout out to all you people in Scotland. You know, to all the love you send me. I'm sending love back to you people. Thank you so much. Let's see. Uh, okay. 
I'm not a false Bay 13, Jimmy. I got a new phone. So new so new YouTube account. Okay. All right, Bay 13. What's up, baby? How's everything? I think I spoke to you in emails before. I'm not sure. I might be thinking of someone else. Let's see. Gone fishing. Love your words of wisdom. The legit life is the best. If we calculate the days of the streets locked up, lawyers being ripped off, minimum wage is way better. hundred percent. And that's the thing too. You know what? When you're a criminal, no one thinks about it. You know, I mean, think about the attorneys, the attorneys you have to go for the money you have to spend. Let me just uh, block this person. Okay. But that's another thing. You know, the attorney fee, you take a pinch, okay? Now you have to pay attorneys. You need a good attorney when you get arrested, right? And you're going to think about it. Don't even think about beating it. You got to think about taking a plea deal. That's just the way it is, you know? Unless you're totally innocent, then maybe you go to trial and you try to beat it. Let's see, Anthony Santoro. Jimmy, I have a feeling that when all the boys get out and run into each other, you'll all see each other as the kids you all were and be able to have a bear, God willing. Uh, I don't know. I don't think so, Anthony Santoro. I'm going to tell you why. Because, you know, I'm moving forward with my life, you know. Right now, I'm taking care of me and my family, the people in my corner. That's who I'm taking care of. And, you know, I don't forgive as far as, you know, when you kill, uh, you know, your best friend and stuff like that. It's just, you know, I, 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 it's just something that bothers me. I have PTSD, so things like this bother me, you know. And uh, the, these people all have to focus on their own lives. And if they're looking to get together and have a bear, then right there, that's the wrong thing to do, getting together. Move on with your life, spread out, spread away, and you know what? Go live your life. That's what you need to do for sure. Joe Beach, who the hell is this Lee Cole guy, somebody else who has no clue who you are or anybody else but likes to talk about them? Don't even know Joe Beach. All right, let's see what... uh. You must pay your attorneys. Of course, absolutely. That's the thing. Joe Murray's a defense attorney, guys. So, you know, anybody out there getting into trouble, Joe Murray, he'll be taking your money, just letting you guys know. Jimmy, when will you have Tommy Dades on again? He is always a great guest with fantastic stories. Uh, he'll be on soon. You know, it's a 4th of July weekend, so... I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll talk about, you know, something. Tommy Dates. Tommy Dates is always good uh, to have on. You know, we have a nice time with Tommy Dates. I don't. When I have Tommy Dates on, I don't want Tommy Dates to be on like no longer than ninety minutes, because who wants to watch a two-hour show? You know, I mean, an hour show, ninety-minute show. But uh, let me see. Okay, Gary. The past is the past. This is a new chapter with new positive people. Absolutely, Gary. Gary, you know what? That's why I love you because you, you really, you say intelligent things, you know. The past is the past. Exactly. Those people, there ain't no sitting down with those people no more. I have new people in my life, you know. I focus on myself. I want to be successful. I want to spread, you know, some love and joy out there. Okay. But Rob, hey, Jimmy, have a great fourth. Frank Marcia, Joe Murray, right on. You want the best defense. You got to pay the bucks, baby, for sure. So let me get back to the, uh, the moderated thing. So, so far I picked Gary. Monteleone as a moderator. I'm also going to uh, have 
Graffiti Mouth as a moderator. So Graffiti Mouth will have a wrench now. Another guy that I'm close with, I'm going to pick Eddie G. Eddie G is also going to have a wrench in my chat now because Eddie G is a dear friend of mine. Don't know if you guys know Eddie G, but he's a comedian, actor, and uh, he's a dear friend of mine too, a really good guy. And also, there's another uh, female out there that I'm going to pick. Her name is Sherry. I'm going to give Sherry a wrench. This way when Sherry comes on, Sherry, you have a wrench. Sherry gives me good advice. She's a part of Michael Franzis uh, in a circle, and she's always giving me good advice. So uh, I'm giving Sherry a wrench too. This way we have more wrenches in here. And, uh, you know, live and let live. They do a hell of a job. Every so often, Fat Ball Sicilian's in here and uh, Gunsmoke. But they, they aren't in every time I go live. So, you know, I want to create a team over here that, uh, you know, when they come in, they do have a wrench. Say some, an evil person comes in, they could, uh, you know, get the, take the trash out. That's basically what moderators do. I'm just reading the chat. Let me see what's going on. Gary Martin-Leon says, let's see, I'm just a subscriber. Can I get a screwdriver since you're giving out wrenches? <laughs> That's a funny one. Gary, congrats <laughs> to all. Yes. And you know what? In time, I will be giving out some more wrenches. Vinny B, my uncle had a camera store on Bay Parkway and Bad Avenue back in the 70s and 80s. Wow. Bay Parkway and Bad. Do you know that there's still a Carvel store over there that's been there for maybe 30 to 40 years on that corner? I mean, it burnt down, but then I guess they fixed it or something, but it's been out there forever. What's up, Jimmy from Canada? Love your show. Thank you, Randy. I appreciate that. Hey, Jimmy. Have a wonderful 4th of July weekend. You deserve it. Rob D., same to you. Thank you. Nicholas Samato. Jimmy, how difficult was it to rebuild your life after being away for a significant amount of time? What kind of challenge did you face? Did you have difficulty in integrating back into society? You know what? I'll tell you. It's a, it's a hell of a question. It's, it's a very good question. And you know what? People do have problems coming back into society. Me personally, I didn't have those problems. I have a great support system. I have a great family. I really do. And uh, I'm blessed in life. I, you know what? I was always blessed in life. I always had a good family. It's just, uh, you know, growing up in that neighborhood, it was basically, you know, once, you know, John Polio was murdered, it was, we had to make a stand. And that's when we formed the Bad Avenue crew. You know, we all had to protect each other. And, uh, you know, in the course of growing up, you fall, you get back up, you learn certain things in the street from certain people, you pick up on them, and you become a product of your environment. And that's exactly what it was. So, uh, you know, I just, you know, I thank God I had the opportunity to correct my life. And a lot of people don't have that opportunity. And the people that had that opportunity and didn't take it, shame on them. Because at the end of the day, Remember, people, you are number one, okay? You're number one. Always remember that, okay? So, uh, you know, you got to think about your future, and, you know, you got to get on the ball with that because time goes by real quick in life, very fast, too fast, actually. You know, and by the time you know it, you're old and gray, you're looking back, and you say, why, wow, I should have did this, I should have did that, and uh, you know, it's just the way it is. 
The choices we make change the course of our lives. You're blessed to have the second chance, brother. Absolutely, Gary. That's 100% for sure. And I, and I say it every day. And, and you know what? Without God in my life, I tell you, I don't know where I would be. You know, so uh, I definitely have to give him the credit. Uh, you know, having faith in your life and believing in God, it's very important. So, you know, look into that. Look into, you know, giving your life to God for sure. You know, and I'm not telling you to wear it on your sleeve. I'm not telling you to preach it. But you know what? Just practice it. And it'll make you, he'll, he'll give you peace inside. And uh, I'm telling you, it'll make you successful. And it'll put all good people around you. For sure, 100%. Lewis Cole, Jimmy, you taking the good you learned from the street and applied it to your new life and changed it for the better. Big bro. Thank you, Lewis. I appreciate that. I hope everything's good with you and your family. You got a beautiful family, Lewis. God bless you. You know, and it, and it's people like you, people like Gary. You know, all these good people that are giving good comments. You know, you people are the people who make my channel. So, uh, you know, I thank all of you out there, and thank you so much for following me. It means so much to me, and uh, you know, I have a lot more to come. You know. You open up a YouTube channel, or even if you open up a store, whatever it is, you open up a business, you know what? You go in one direction, and you think that this direction is the direction you're going to take. And then you realize, you know what? Some doors open, and now you spread out, and it's a totally different direction, totally different uh, path of you know what you thought you were going has changed for the better in different ways you know i hope you guys understand that i don't know let me see sly stallone now that would be nice if this is the real sly stallone right if this was the real sly stallone that'd be really nice hey jimmy looking good brother keep reaching for the stars try and ignore the parasites take it easy and you and your family have a blessed fourth of july thank you sly i appreciate that very kind of you. Same to you and yours. Let's see. I'm just pulling up comments. This is where we talk about it. Anyone who wants to take that first step to the Lord, you can check out Bobby Louisi, former mob boss from Boston. Show he has teachings every week. There you go. You know what? Bud Rob. Bobby Louisi, I tell you, you know what? Bobby Louisi is a hell of a guy, really good guy. And uh, he's got a great show, you know, gave his life to God, became a minister. Uh, I haven't spoken to Bobby. Actually, Bobby called me the other day. Uh, I got to give this guy a call back. I'm sorry, Bobby, I didn't reach out to you back. I've just been a little busy with the summertime here. I'm trying to make a plan for my kids every day. This way they got something to do, you know? And, uh, but yes, Bobby Louisi is a hell of a guy. Good guy, for sure, 100%. Let me see. Woodrow, Woodrow. Moderation of this site or being wrench a paid position. No, it's not a paid position. Sorry, buddy. But it's got its benefits, for sure. 100%. Absolutely. No one could hit you with a wrench. I mean, you uh, you have access to me. Let's see. I'm just looking. Okay, here's one. Baka Baka. Now, Baka, how are you? How's everything? God first, Jim. You live the streets, and that makes who you are. Now you're going on to create the best chapter of your life. 100%. Absolutely. So we got nine, we we got 191 people in the chat. We just had over 200. So like I said, you know what? I don't go live all the time. I go live every so often. But let me give a shout out to uh, Miss McGinnis. Barbara Louise is down to earth. I like him too. So let me shout out a few people, people over here. Uh, Pistol Pete, Paul O'Sullivan. The Duke of Dunhurst. Hmm. Who 
Guadino Inc., Chris McPherson, Gaetano Bracco, I'm just looking at the chat, people. Okay. I see uh, Gaetano Bracco. I see what he says. If I had a wrench, I would take B1 out. Okay. We'll, we'll leave B1 in for a minute. Eventually, he'll get uh, knocked out. Chris McPherson. Hey, Jimmy. Watching from Glasgow, Scotland. Your channel is good. I actually watched you on a mob documentary in prison. Your videos with Tommy Dades fill a lot of gaps for me regarding mob stuff. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. Chiba Man, happy 4th of July. Same to you. Yes, Joe's Lanchonette back in the day. Jimmy, what about Joe's Lanchonette on Bad Day? Do you remember? That was a very, very long time ago, buddy. Yes, I do remember that. Jimmy, was that Sonny in the picture that you posted the other day with the cigar? Uh, I don't recall. I'm not sure which one you're talking about. But let's let's get back to uh, the topic of what. And I'm also going to give Joey Dubs a wrench. So Joey Dubs, you're going to get a wrench too, okay? So when you come in, you have a wrench. Now these people that I'm giving wrenches to, they're all close to me: Graffiti Mouth, Eddie G, Joey Dubs, Sherry, Gary Mont. And, uh, you know, Boston J, live and let live. So uh, Boston J says he's gone. Okay, thanks, Boston J. But, uh, yeah, you know, all these people, I know them very well. So, that, you know, that's who I'm giving wrenches to. You know, this is uh, YouTube is a platform where you need moderators. Uh, you have these evil people that come in. They want to disturb your uh whatever your topic is whatever you're talking about at that time and they think it's fun and games you know you know some people do this they think it's fun other people uh do it because uh you know they're evil so you know this is i guess this is a more you know who's behind doing things like this me personally I got no time for, uh, you know, going into someone's channel and start bothering people. Like, I have a, a busy life. You know, these people probably have nothing going on in their life. I guess that's the reason why, you know, they want to bother other people. But uh, Princess Miss, yes, moderators perform an important job. Yes, they do, 100%. Absolutely. What you're basically doing is you're taking out the trash and you're watching what's going on. You know, so, for example, some people could be arguing the chat, and, you know, I don't have that that happens in my channel, which is a good thing. Uh, but if they did, I would basically tell them, listen, quit it. If not, then what you do is you got to, you know, drop them. You got to get rid of them because, you know, some people are funny. Some people like the attention. But I want to get back to what the topic is over here, talking about when I was in prison. Now, like I said, you know what? I look at photos of, say, for example, Tommy Karate. Okay, back in the day, Tommy Karate was so young. Okay, he's he's one guy that I want to bring up. People say, "Why are you always talking about Tommy Karate?" Why? Because Tommy Karate is a prime example of a bad guy. Okay, he really was a bad guy. You know, but uh. He's a guy that uh, did some evil stuff in the street, you know. He really did. Did some evil stuff, and uh, you know. And when you're in that life, a lot of people need a guy like Tommy Karate because a lot of guys are afraid of him in that life. The same thing with a guy like uh, Gregory Scarpa. Okay, Gregory Scarpa was also an evil guy. You know, another guy who died in jail. Uh, look at Gas Pipe, another guy who died in jail, you know. Uh, Anthony Sparrow, another guy who died in jail. So, you know, these people, uh, they chose what they wanted to do, you know. Uh, 
killing people, being involved in murders, uh, you know, having respect on the street, being fed in the street. That's what these people did. And you know what? They died in jail. So uh, the message to all the kids out there, I say kid, it could be a grown adult. It could be uh, a criminal that's active out there. You know what? Eventually, you're going to run into a wall, okay? And the plan that you make, the plan's not going to work, and you're going to get caught, and you're going to find yourself in a prison cell. You know, don't be that guy that dies in prison because you'll be wasting your life, okay? Be the guy that works hard, does the right thing, you know, and helps others. That's the person you have to be for sure because, look, there's a lot of bad people out there, but there's a lot of good people out there. You know, be one of the good ones. Yes, Gary, they were fed. They were not loved. For sure. Absolutely. That's what they were. They were fed. They were not loved. That's for sure. Let's see. Sydney Pringle said, said, triangle from Edinburgh. Keep up the good work, Jimmy. Thank you, Sydney. Thank you. All right, let's see uh, what this guy has to say. Gabriel, Gabriel De Leon. Jimmy, since you did time with Manny Madonna and spent a lot of time together, did he ever have aspirations of being the boss when he came out? Or did he just want to stay low level? Thanks, Jim. No, Manny Madonna, he never had aspirations of becoming a boss. Now, let me tell you about Manny Madonna. Since you mentioned Manny Madonna, Manny Madonna, I'll tell you, was uh, it was a class act when I met him. You know, uh, he was, I think he went home at the age of 59 years old. Okay. I was 23, 24. And he put me in the right direction. He told me, use this place to your advantage. Okay. He sat down with me in the law library. We went over some law. And Manny Madonna was like a legal beagle. You know, he was good with the law and stuff like that. And he was tough. You know, uh, back in the day, he actually killed a man in prison. You know, that's how tough he was. You know what I mean, if you think you're tough in the street, pick up a knife and try to kill somebody in prison. I mean, that's pretty tough. You know, when you don't need nobody, you're doing something by, on your own. That's tough. And, uh, you know, Manny Madonna actually lived that life. He's an old school guy. And he's going to die in jail. You know, he's a guy that's never going to sing. Uh, he's never going to talk. But you know what? That's the life he chose. And he taught me a lot. That guy taught me a lot. He really did. And I got respect for that man. I do. Because <clears throat> he taught me a lot. And he helped me. He looked out for a young kid. That's what he did. And I was that young kid. And he showed me how to do prison time. And... uh. You know, when you get to Lewisburg Penitentiary, you're 23 years old, you're like, you know what, you got a 40-foot wall, and you're looking around, you have these men that are in the, uh, you know, the towers with rifles, and you're walking the yard, and uh, listen, I was with a lot of good guys. I was with Jimmy Gallo from Red Hook. I got a couple photos of him. I got to pull out. Uh, I was with uh, Chicky, uh, Chickalini from Philadelphia, I'll tell you, Ciccolini, he was uh, he was this big guy, scary looking guy. He would walk the yard, and every time he walked the yard, you know what, he would do pull-ups and dips in like zero below weather with his shirt off, Ciccolini, the guy from Philadelphia. That's their father. I was with a lot of Boston guys, uh, the kid Anthony uh, Bova, uh, some other kid, Richie, uh, Richie Morello, I think his name was. Uh, there was a lot of guys I was with. I'll tell you. Uh, what's his name? Another Boston guy I was with. I forgot his name, an old time. I actually sold with him. Uh, I was with Frankie Pern, or Patty De La Russo. I was with a lot of guys, a lot of guys. Uh, this other kid, Nicky, from... Uh, 
13th Avenue. He ended up killing the guy with uh what's his face? Junior Junior uh from the Mob Wives. When Junior killed that guy, this kid Nicky was with him. I was with him in Lewisburg. Again, Sally Fusco, uh, Mikey Bloom. Uh, I was around tons of guys, Frankie Lesterino, Joe Gant tons of guys. I met a lot of guys. Right? And some of them I knew from the street, you know. But what I'm saying is that all these guys at the end, these prisons are filled up with street guys, wise guys. I mean, you might think you're so clever, but you're not that clever. You know, so uh, that's why I say be careful what you do because, you know, some of these guys, they're finding themselves in a prison cell for the rest of their life. And you know what? It's not a place you want to be, you know. But, uh, no, I don't think Manny Madonna had, you know, inspirations of becoming uh, a boss of a family. At the time, I guess everything worked out for him. Because, uh, you know, Manny Madonna was not even straightened out when I met him. Manny Madonna got straightened out when he went home. You know, he became very good friends with uh, the boss of the Lucchese family. And uh, as soon as he went home, he got straightened out. And, uh, you know, Manny Madonna, I used to meet him in the Big Geyser. That's uh, it's on the border of Brooklyn and Queens. Uh, it's like near Williamsburg. But the big guys is a big company with all sodas and everything. I used to go in there. And every so often, you have Jackie the Nose in there. You would have uh, a couple other wise guys in there. I met uh, Mike Meldish over there. And, uh, you know, I met these guys. And when I met these guys, you know, I was like, wow, you know what? I know who this guy is. I never met him before. But, you know, these guys were Mad Hatters, you know. And my Madonna would take me for a walk in the back in the storage and he would walk with me, you know, and, uh, you know, but he was a good guy. I tell you, you know, if I had a problem, I reached out to him and, uh, he helped me at that time when I needed him. So, uh, and I needed to get away from these kids and he helped me with that. You know, he helped me get away from these kids, which is a good thing. You know, once they cook, once they killed Paulie G, I really don't want anything to do with them. No more. You know, they weren't my friends. And I couldn't trust them. I could only imagine what they, uh, their conversations must have been about me. I'm sure there was a lot of those conversations, you know. Like when Jimmy gets home, you know, what are we going to do with him? But as soon as I got home, you know, I told Manny Madonna what I need to do. Manny Madonna and I went to go see Sparrow Joe Benanti, and he pulled me out of there, you know. And I saw Fabrizio. Fabrizio was a wise guy already. He said, Jimmy, he said, when... when Sparrow and Joe Benetti release you. He said, I got so mad. I said, for so what's the difference? Whether I'm here or whether I'm there, we're still friends. And that's a true conversation right there. But uh, let's see what else we got over here. Josh, okay. Jimmy, have you read the Revenite transcripts? It's the tapes from Gotti and Frankie Lowe in the apartment. It really shows the truth about Gravano and what he was doing. Gotti was heartbroken. You know what? I never, ever read those tapes. I'll tell you, you know what? I, maybe I'll Google them. It really shows the truth about Gabon and what he was doing. Gotti was heartbroken. No, I never, ever read those tapes. Well, listen, I'm going to tell you something. You know, you want to talk about Sammy. You know, look, Sammy's my friend, just to let you know, okay? And uh, I respect Sammy. Uh, you know, whatever Sammy did, that's his business. That has nothing to do with me. But, uh, you know, he's one guy that invited me to Arizona. And I didn't even get to go in a hotel, which I was going to stay in a hotel. But when I got to the airport, he was there with one of his assistants. And Sammy goes, you know, when I saw Sammy, I kissed him hello and stuff like that. And uh, he offered me, he says, Jimmy, you want to stay with me? I mean, I'm by myself and with my dog. He says, there's no reason for you to go to a hotel. And I said, Sammy. I said, of course. And uh, listen, I had a great time with Sammy. I really did. I had a great time with Sammy. And so far, I'm the only guy who did that. He invited me to his home. And, uh, you know, we had a dinner with him and his uh, daughter, Karen. I had a dinner with 
them when I was out there. But, uh, you know, listen, I respect Sammy, and I'm always going to respect them. And uh, that's just the way it is, you know. So, uh, you know, that's that as far as that. Lewis Cole, as soon as I'm in the States to visit my fam from Detroit, I will be contacting Jimmy, Austin J, Gary Montalion, New York Dad, Live and Let Live, Eddie G, Gerard Gerard. Uh, Lewis, anytime you come in, if you're coming to New York, of course, reach out. You know, I definitely make time for you for sure. John Epi, Jimmy. If you could go back in life, do you think you could have talked Pauly G out of the life? You know, I don't know if I could have talked Pauly G out of the life, but I'll tell you, I will definitely uh, would try. What I know now, I would definitely try. And if I seen the future of Pauly G getting killed, for sure. You know why? Uh, You know, look, I think a lot different than the way I used to think. So, uh, you know, let that just be said. Lewis Cole, thank you for the fight hour super chat. I appreciate it. You don't have to do it, but thank you. Very kind of you. So you were with two serious guys that was a godsend with Maddie and Herbie. Well, you know what? You know, there's a story behind that because, uh, you know, the guy who actually reached out to them was a guy by the name of Oscar the Syrian. Okay. Now, his name is Little Oscar. Nobody knows about Little Oscar. Little Oscar was like, you know, he has uh, a reputation of, uh, you know, someone say that uh, he shot a missile down. You know, these are stories I heard about Little Oscar. A little Oscar the Caesarian, his name is. And, uh, you know, only old timers know. What happened was Mikey DeSantis, I would spend time with Mikey DeSantis. You know, Mikey DeSantis, Michael DeSantis and I, uh, we have some family that, you know, are related with each other. But, you know, Mikey, uh, I spent time with Mikey, and Mikey's a class act too. And, uh, you know, when I went to Lewisburg, Mikey reached out to whoever he reached out to, and Maddie and Herbie was in touch with uh, Oscar the Caesarian, little Oscar. And uh, that's how, you know, when I got there, they put you, they quade you first. You got to get quaded because they want to make sure, are you okay to come out? You know I'm saying they want to uh, make sure that you, know, you don't have no enemies in the prison and stuff like that. I said, no, yeah, I'm okay to come out. And uh, you know what? Herbie and Maddie, as soon as I walked out the door, they were waiting for me. They said, Jimmy, they said, uh, you're Jimmy Calandra? I said, yeah. I said, you know, who are you? He said, uh, I'm Maddie, and that's Herbie. And, uh, you know, Herbie just looked at me, you know, and uh, I shook both of their hands. I said, oh, nice to meet you. You know, thank you, you know, for uh, being here for me. And Maddie told me, he says, you're going to go sell in uh, J Block with Herbie. And uh, I went on the second tier. And I'll tell you, you know what? Doing time with these guys, you know, look, I seen things like you you would never even think of, seriously. Like we had Jamaicans on the first tier. The Jamaicans used to love dumplings. You know, so they would make their own dumplings. You would get flour from the kitchen. So whoever worked in the kitchen would bring you flour. And you would make some dumplings. And then there was a bucket with a stinger. A stinger is a, is a, a device that is, that is attached to uh, a cord that you plug in the wall. Okay, you plug in the wall, you put in the bucket of water, and all of a sudden the water starts boiling. And you put the dumplings in the water. And this Jamaican was making dumplings. I swear, when I first got there, this is who, I mean, I'm you know, eating with Jamaicans, Italians. Uh, then, then I see other guys are making grilled cheeses. Okay, look, they're making grilled cheeses. They have this iron. Okay, an iron that you iron. And you know what? They're making legitimately grilled cheeses on an iron, okay, with bread and cheese. I'm like, you know what? You can't make this fucking shit up. This, this was fucking, I'm telling you, look, I look back and the things they did to cook, you know, and then of course you have, uh, 
You have the TV. There's a TV on every tier. Everyone takes a vote of what they're going to watch. You know, you want to keep your yourself clean. And who's making hooch? Who's gambling? I'm telling you, listen, you know what? Prison is definitely an experience. And, uh, you know, look, I don't recommend it to nobody. But sometimes some people need it to have a wake-up call. You know, and if you do time and you come out and you don't learn from it, shame on you. Jaitano Brocco, it's crazy because Maddie Hervey lives ended horrible. But they gave you good advice because you were young. They knew it was too late for them, I think. But you know what? I'll tell you, and Herbie, Herbie had these uh these Jewish uh like get togethers, and when you went in there, you had to wear the beanie. So we all had beanies on our head, and you know Herbie was, you know, the main guy, the Jewish guy, and we would eat all this kosher food that came out from outside. So you know, that's one thing about prison too. A lot of people play, uh, you know, who's Jewish because you know what? If you want kosher food, you become Jewish. You know, some people just eat the regular food. Some people become Muslims. But when you go to prison, a lot of people change their faith. Because sometimes it benefits you by being a certain religion. And that's the truth. Anybody at the time before will tell you. Hey, Sherry. Oh, I see Sherry in the chat. So, Sherry, I gave you a wrench. So, you have a wrench now when you come in, okay? So, if you see something like, uh, you know, someone that's saying something stupid or something, you have the uh, power to... Uh, throw them out of the chat. So I'm making you a moderator. Whether you like it or not, you don't have to use it. You don't have to be in the chat when I come in. I'm just saying if you're in the chat, now what you could do is you can, uh, you know, knock them out of the chat. So uh, that's just to show you how much I trust you and I appreciate you. You know, I know you're uh, in Michael's circle. And, you know, we uh, spoke before every so often. You always give, give me good advice. And I appreciate you. So uh, I also make Gary uh, a moderator too, just to let you know. Let's see. Uh, Nicholas Semedo, Jimmy, did the Bad Damn You crew ever collaborate or cross paths with the Howard Beach Bonanno crew, Asaro Ronnie G, Gene B? I've never heard you speak of them, but they were also Bonanos. No, no, we never crossed paths with them. Uh, the only ones I knew uh, of back then were the Gianni crew, okay? Yes, the Gianni crew, they were our age. They were pretty wild like us. Uh, the kid Paul, uh, a couple other kids from back in Queens, you know, but yes. No, all these other guys, Asaro, no. Uh, Ronnie G, Gene B, no. I didn't cross paths with them, you know. And I think Gene's a little younger than us, so uh, no. I didn't cross paths with none of them. Sherry Ann, your channel rocks. Thank you, Sherry. I appreciate that. Jimmy, can I get a piece of gas pipe? A piece of gas pipe. Well, I'm sure a lot of people want a piece of gas pipe, right? I mean, you know, some people, uh, you know, this is a guy that was involved in like 39 murders. You know what I mean, I mean, you know, this guy was a bad guy, you know. I mean, this guy lived that life. Like, I mean, this is a guy that when they fixed his house, the guy who fixed his house, uh, he knocked off because he, he wanted to make sure that no one else knew where like a secret department was, you know. I mean, gas pipe, really, it's, it's, it's something like people like that. Yeah, that's his name, Paul Bregoza, yes. Neil Constantino. And he's in total 1010 Hazen Street, taught me a lot, boy. I knew a guy who converted just for the blue tray food. No, it's the truth, 100%. And that, that's exactly what they do. Johnny B. from the Bronx. Jimmy, Michael Meldish and his brother were fed. But it's like you said, look how his life ended up. The mob killed him. But you know what? Look, these guys were fed. The Purple Gang, they were fed 100%. Michael Meldish and his brother and his brother is doing like so much time. 
in the state joint. But look, you know what? I mean, to waste your life away, okay? I mean, once your freedom is taken away, what kind of life are you, do, you, do you live? I mean, inside, the man is the CEO and the guy who runs the prison. You know I mean, they tell you when to get up. They tell you when to stand up. I mean, and then God forbid when you get sick along the way, you're not going to have the right medicine. You know what? You're not, you're not going to wake up to your family. So look, my message out, my message to everyone out there is, listen, you know what? do the right thing. Don't get caught up, uh, you know, going to prison, wasting your life. There's a lot of guys out there. There were some bad motherfuckers. You know what? They still are bad. They still believe in that life. But you know what? They're going to die in prison. So it's a waste of a life, 100%. A waste of a life. Gary, Jimmy, I need to leave for work. I appreciate everything. Let's connect so I know what I need to do. God bless. Sure, Gary, absolutely. Oh, yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll have a wrench. But uh, thank you. Listen, have a good day. I hope you're feeling good today, and I appreciate you. All right? Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, Gary. Roderick Molina, Purple Gang was fed. Now there's a Costco on Pleasant Avenue. Yeah, I know. I was just I was just out there on Pleasant Day Avenue, out there Avenue. I was out there a couple of days ago, but uh, I tell you those Bronx guys, man, those Bronx guys, they they uh, you know, they stay strong. Those Bronx guys, Carlos Munoz, Jimmy, have a great Fourth of July weekend. Enjoy your family, kid. Thanks, Carlos. That's my boy, Carlos. Carlos, same to you and your family. I appreciate it, and uh, I'll see you after Fourth of July weekend. Thanks, New York Dad. I'm happy to help Jimmy. He's the best. Thank you, Sherry. I appreciate that. You know that. So uh, I got 226 people in the chat. Now, uh, listen, I'm going to be making some other people moderators in the near future. I am. I just want to get to know some people. Uh Pazzo, what's up, Pazzo? Jimmy, you said you met Mike Meldish while visiting Maddie. Those two were friends at the time. Now look what happened between them. Yes, and when I met them, they were friends. Absolutely. You know, they were they were smiling at each other and they were very tight, eating, eating a nice sandwich together. And uh, you know what? That's exactly what happened. And that's exactly what happened with me and my friends. I'm saying you be your, your friends until, you know what? Something comes up in the street where you're not friends no more. Joe Murray. Happy Independence Day, everyone. No offense to the Brits. Enjoy the barbecues and fireworks. But take a few minutes and read the Declaration of Independence. It is very relevant. To today's government there you go Joe Murray so if you have a chance you can google it too read the Declaration of Independence Joe Murray thank you for the ten dollars I appreciate it it all adds up thank you Joe uh, let's see who else we got over here we got Gerard Gerard what's up Gerard Gerard I see you Jimmy is a great man and a big influence in my life. Thank you, New York Dad. I appreciate that. Toby Jug, I'm Peaky from Scotland, remember. Now, if you look at this photo, right? If you look at this photo, now you see me from back in the day that's behind me, right? This photo. You see me, you see Calco behind me, you see Paulie G, Tommy Reynolds, and William. Now, out of this photo, it's really something. I, I, you know, I'm going to explain this photo. You know, I cooperate with the government. Joey Calco behind me cooperate with the government. Paulie Galino's dead. And uh, William Galloway cooperate with the government, right? And Tommy Reynolds is the only one that stood up. 
Tommy Reynolds is the only one that stood up. Now, Tommy Reynolds had an opportunity to come forward. You know, Tommy Days had him in the car. You know, Tommy Days told me the story. I think maybe you guys heard the story. But, uh, you know, Tommy didn't want to come forward. Tommy believed in this life. Tommy believed in that life, you know. And, uh, you know, but that's how I look at this photo. The, the guy in the middle, Paulie G, and the two guys by his side are the guys who killed him, okay. Obviously, you know, I was away at that time, which I'm glad I was away because I would never want to be a part of that. And uh, if I was out, they might have asked me to do it, which, thank God, I have nothing to do with that, you know. But uh, Paulie G was a guy that killed for his friends. He didn't kill his friends. That's who he was at that time. Now, I'm not saying that he is a role model. I'm not saying he's someone to look up to. But what I'm saying is that he was very loyal as a friend. That's what I'm saying. John B. from the Bronx, Jimmy Pauly G. came back to Haunt Sparrow. Yeah, a lot of things came back to Haunt Sparrow. Ron Amada, how's it going, Jimmy? Glad you could come on. Thank you. Have a blessed weekend. You too. Neil Constantino. I don't give a crap. You would never have killed Paulie. No way. I would never. No way. 100% never. But you know what? I look at things as, uh, you know what, look. If I wasn't away, I might have been a target with Paulie. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. But it didn't work out that way. Joe Murray, I only know that because I went to John Adams High School. It was cold. Jimmy, happy fourth. If you ever throw me a wrench, I've always got your back, bro. You know that, Louis Cole? You know what? I know you do. And you know what? I'm going to give you a wrench, though. Okay, Louis Cole? You're going to get a wrench, though, Louis Cole. Because you know what? I feel like I know your heart. So, you got a wrench too. I'm just writing down who has wrenches over here. This way I know. And uh, so, Lewis Cole, you have a wrench, okay? Because I believe in you. That's why I give you a wrench. I had conversations with you. I know your heart. Jason Perezzi. Do you still set all fireworks with your kids? Now, you know what? I get my kids the big sparklers, like the real, the big ones, and at nighttime we'll light them off. I'll get some uh, stuff to like, you know, maybe some colorful stuff to go in the air. But as far as the uh, other stuff, no. You know, I'm going to be in Pennsylvania. So, you know, in Pennsylvania, everything's legit. So, uh, you know, that's, the, that's what's so much fun about being in Pennsylvania. You could light fireworks. You can't light fireworks in New York, you know. Roger Molina, classy move, Jimmy. Thank you. Yes, thanks, Jimmy. Really love and respect you, bro. I know that, Lewis. And you know why? And I love and respect you. And you know what? You showed me your heart. And I know uh, I can trust you. And I'm comfortable with you. So thank you. I appreciate it. Let's see. Who else we got over here? The Duke of Donhurst. I don't need a wrench, but you can trust me, God first, people, and good things happen. Just saying. But a Duke of Donhurst, you know what? Maybe one day you will have a wrench. You know, maybe once I get to know you, and you know what? God bless you too. God first always. Much love from Buffalo. Send them Buffalo love back.
and it's the truth you know sherry it really is we're your extended family jimmy and we will always have your back and you know what and i appreciate that and that's to every one of you people out there every one of my audience every one of my followers everyone who supports me you know what you are a part of my family and that's what i'm here for and i know you guys are there too so i appreciate those words from you sherry and i appreciate every one of you out there very much you know what it means a lot to me and you know what before i even uh was gonna do this moderating and giving people wrenches i actually called boston j and i said boston j i said what do you think uh you know about me giving out wrenches and uh you know it's a uh, you know he would say, you know what, Jimmy, do it. Give other people wrenches. You know, I got uh, over 26,000 people following me. Uh, we're working on 27,000. And, uh, you know, a lot more people should have wrenches. Why not? You know, I got a big family here. So, you know, and there's a lot of people I trust. I tell you, there's a lot of people I trust with my life. And that's, you know, who, you know, I give these wrenches to. So, uh, you know, if I gave you a wrench feel honored because i really trust you jimmy at least your heart is in the right place have a great fourth with your family god bless thank you david the same to you jimmy this year no fireworks me and my brother dropped over two g's last year yeah but you don't have to buy two two g's you could buy maybe like 200 dollars worth of fireworks or something I mean, just a little something, just to shoot off, you know? I mean, listen, I used to love lighting fireworks back in the day. Fireworks are great. You know, I remember the day after the 4th of July, the whole neighborhood, all the streets would have firecrackers with all the paper and everything, and we'd be looking for, like, empty packs just to light them off the next day, you know? That's how it was back then. It softens my heart to you guys that love and have Jimmy's back. He never had it easy. God bless you all. And, uh, you know, that's Live and Let Live. Live and Let Live. No, don't know if you guys know, but that's my sister. You know I'm saying that's my older sister. I love my sister and I love my family. So, uh, you know what? You know, we're extending our family also to you guys. So just this way you know. Okay. And, uh, you know, when good things happen to me, good things are going to happen to all of you. Okay. I'm letting you all know that. Okay. And, uh, you know, I stay by my word. That's for sure. Let's see who else we got over here. David Testa. I enjoy your live chats. Jimmy always have and will continue to do so. You have a really good heart. God bless. Thank you. God bless you too, David. It means a lot to me. And uh, I appreciate it. Boston J. Love you and you're the best. God bless your heart. Boston J is the best. He's, he's very uh, loyal to me. And, uh, you know, look, Irish people are loyal people. Let me see what else so far we have an hour and a half you know what let me uh let me drop a link okay i'll hang around for a little longer anybody wants to come on come on okay drop the link brad r i spent 33 years at the gas company well, hopefully you had a good pension. Good for you. 33 years. Wow. It's time for you to sit back now and enjoy your life a little. You know, go on a trip. I hope you enjoy yourself. You know, take care of your health. This way you can go on a trip. You know, you deserve it. Coach. Oh, I got the coach in here. Jimmy, hope all is great with you and your family. Sorry I have not had time to get online on your show i've been in florida good hey i hope you're enjoying yourself 
taking care of yourself, you and your family. Happy fourth to you and your family. You know, just keep on taking care of yourself, coach. Thanks for dropping by. I appreciate it. Here in Canada, we're not allowed to leave the country. Hmm. Mike, uh, let's see. Hi, Jimmy. Are you aware of any mob dealings with the IRA, Irish Republican Army? I think Pat Nee was involved with the IRA. Now, Pat Nee, I did some time with Pat Nee. I definitely have a photo of Pat Nee floating around. I'm definitely in a photo with Pat Nee flowing around somewhere. Uh, there's a couple people I'm in photos with that are flowing around. But uh, Pat Nee, I tell you, he uh, he was definitely a gentleman, you know, soft-spoken. And you would never, ever think that this guy was in the IRA, you know saying? But uh, he was a good guy, Pat Nee. What's up, Jimmy? From New Springville, Michael Vincent. What's up, Michael? How's everything? New Springville. I remember New Springville back in the day. But I'm going to be telling some Bad Avenue stories. I'm going to go back telling a couple Bad Avenue stories. So I look forward to it. I got some stories I want to tell about, uh, you know, Chris Passiello. I want to tell a story about him. You know, you know, even looking back, Chris Passiello. You know, I know a lot of people have different. Uh, opinions of him, but uh, you know, he all he ever wanted to do was make money, you know. And look at him now, this guy is like uh, the king of Miami, he's making millions of dollars. This guy, I mean, uh, you know, but I met him to Gerard Bellafiori, Chris Passiello. Miss McCain's Gerard Gerard hello 6 p.m. Lee has anniversary show. I mean no disrespect to Jimmy Calandra. Okay. What time is it? 539. Lee has an anniversary show. Is Lee on here a year two now? <laughs> God first, Jimmy, love you. I love you too. It's my sister. Okay, and uh, let's see. Hi, Jimmy. I'm sorry about Paul G. Backstabbing friend, no good. Yeah, you know, that whole life was no good. There was nothing good about that life. Seriously, looking back, growing up with my friends, I have a lot of nice memories as a, you know, growing up as a child and becoming friends with my friends and getting into, uh, you know, certain things. But then later on, as my friends were getting murdered, it's just, uh, you know, looking back, it's a life where, uh, you know, none of us had the opportunities of, you know, enjoying each other's uh, families as far as going to each other's kids' christenings, uh, weddings, you know, open up uh, businesses together, and just, uh, you know, things like that. You know, we all lost. So uh, so I got, Lu I got Lewis Cole over here. So let me uh, say hi to Lewis Cole. Lou, what's up, baby? How are you, big bro? Are you okay? Yeah, how's everything? Yeah, everything's good, man. Everything's really good. How's yes. everything with you? Everything, everything's good. You know, thanks for coming by. Yeah, I just wanted to. I'm only staying for a few minutes, Jim. But um, yeah, I just wanted to say, you know, uh, like as as I've got to know you more, you know, since last year and stuff like that, and um, you know, obviously when I've spoke to you and you've mentioned about you know Paulie G and like I really felt, you know, like the love you had for him, like a, a close. Like a brother, if, if anything, you know what I mean. Yeah. And um, like I also lost a close friend, Jim, in the street. You see, many moons back. Uh, yeah. John Mealy, his name was. So that's why I always took to you. You see, brother, and then 
obviously with your message always being positive and keeping the youth away from the street life and all that, I've always had like big respect for you since then, you see, Jim. So I would just wish you all the success with the channel and and you know all health and you know well being for the family as well for you, Jim. You know going forward. Yeah, thank you, and uh, you know I wish you the same. You know, just uh, you know, look, I see the uh, you know the other day when you came on and you had your kids there. Look, that speaks volumes to me. You know how uh, you know you go to work every day, and at the end of the day, you come home to your family. You know, that's what a man yeah. is. You know what I mean? That's what a man is. You know, a man does things like that. You know, the family yeah. is number one. So you take yeah. care of your family. So I respect you for that. And you know what? I, uh, you know, I admire you a lot. And, uh, you know, I, I just appreciate your friendship because you give me a lot of knowledge and you say a lot of kind things. So I know you're someone I can trust. You know, so. Uh, yeah, 100%, you know, so I, Jim. I, I feel the same way about you, just to let you know. And also, um. I have been with uh, the wife to be for sixteen years. <laughs> to be in a uh, rocky road like Jim. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's another thing. Relationships are hard, you know, and you gotta yeah. work. Listen, you gotta work on them. But uh, yeah, that's uh, you know, hey, that's a beautiful thing too. You know what? The the kids wake up to uh, you know, the mom and dad. That's a nice thing, you know. Yeah, it's. I think it's important to have a stable, you know, family life. As stable oh, as can be. Yeah, absolutely, a hundred percent. Yes. But Jim, as I say, um, yeah, I've 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 got a little bit bits of stuff going on because um, my me, me oldest boy's got a football presentation in the morning. Yeah. But I just wanted to come on and you know wish you all all a lo all a big love from me, yeah. big respect, and I hope you have loads of success. You know, going forward with the book and everything else we've spoke about. You know, before Jim. Yeah. Just nah, wanna wish you Wish you all the best, you know. Yeah, sure, absolutely. And uh, listen, the same to you. Thanks for coming on. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna stay on here too much longer anyway. But uh, like I said, you know what? I appreciate you, and uh, you know, I'll see you soon. Yeah, yeah, I'll come, I'll come on, Jimmy. You know, when you do your lives on the weekend again, sometime I'll have a proper yeah, chat. Whenever, yeah, yeah, whenever you come on, you'll have a wrench. So, you know, Thanks, you see, brother. yeah, you see someone in the chat, you, you know. Uh, no, no yeah. one can, uh, you know, no one can knock you out of the chat. So that's beneficial of having a wrench. And uh, you know, you see someone saying something, uh, you know, that's not right. You can always just knock them out. You know. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you know, you know, I've, 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 hundred percent got your back, man. You know that, Jim. I know that, and I appreciate and, it. Because, uh, as I say, you know, um, I've, you, when we spoke before, I've told you, um, you know. I followed you for about fourteen years now, Jim. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, as I say, um, you know, I, you, you sort of, you sort of, once you start speaking to people, just one sec. Once you start speaking to people, Jim, you know, even though I know I'm over here in the UK, you sort of, um, you sort of get a feel for if someone's genuine, don't you? You know, and I just want you to know. No, absolutely. No, absolutely. What you do is you you you, you can fill them out. You know. Yeah. You can, fill, you can fill them out. And the thing is, too, look, look. You know what? Just by you being a family man, and you know what? Me seeing your kids, it tells me a lot about you. You know. I mean, so. Well, uh, well that's yeah. what I mean. Um, I have a, uh, you know, sometimes when I've come off, when I, I've only spoke to you all three or four times, haven't I, on the lives? But when I've come off, like obviously the two older kids. They've heard me, you know, in the other room, and then they've said, who are you talking to there, Daddy? So I've said I'm talking to a good friend, Jimmy, from the States. and So they, they, they've sort of, they sort of know you, even though they don't know you, if you know what I mean, Jim. Because okay. <laughs> I'm always singing your praises, you know. <laughs> so thank, thank you, and I appreciate it very much. But anyway, Jim, I'm, um, I'm going to shoot off, just because uh, I've got um, a little bit of washing to get through here. Uh, and yeah. But yeah. I just want to, you know, wish you all the best. Big love and respect from me, brother, always. Look, the same, the same, to, the you. same to you. And, uh, and uh, uh, stay safe. Stay safe. And, uh, and, uh, I'll, see soon. I'll see you soon. Yeah, Jim. Peace and love, bro. Okay, you, you look after yourself, man. Wish all the family well from me. I will. Okay, I'll, I'll speak to you soon, bro. Thank you, Lewis. Lewis Cole.
Well, uh, well, guys, I'm in the chat over here uh, an hour and 45 minutes. So I'm going to say goodbye. I appreciate everyone for coming in. And uh, you have an anniversary. Lee Cole has an anniversary. You can go check him out, I guess, at 6 o'clock. But uh, to all my audience, to all my people out there, listen, you guys are the best. You guys treat me so good. And uh, in return, I want to do the same to you. But uh, thank you for following me. Thank you for the support, the love. You guys mean a lot to me. And to all the new moderators that I named, congratulations. Good for you. Let's just help each other. And thank you for being there for me. That said, I'll see you on my next video. Thanks, guys. I got some bad daring stories coming. Bye, guys. The streets will never make you grow. It's not a seed, it's a gutter. There's no happy endings in this life. So this is my message to you. never love you back.